I'll roll up the sleeves for this one. This is one that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Hello, everyone. My name is Yasmina, and this is my show, The Rewind Zone, where I like to talk about my favorite underrated, sometimes cheesy, sometimes terrible 80s horror movies on Room War TV. Today, we're going to be discussing one of my favorite and underrated sequels that should be appreciated much, much more. And that movie is... Now, don't get me wrong. The first Fright Night is a perfect movie. It's a masterpiece and I love it. Like that dance sequence at the club, I could just die and go to that and be in heaven for eternity. However, because of how perfect Fright Night is, I feel like part two gets dismissed way too often. But I'm here to tell y'all that you need to watch it because it's fucking awesome! Fright Night Part 2 was directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, who directed and wrote like the best Halloween Part 3. William Ragsdale and Roddy McDowell return for Part 2 as well. Amanda Bierce was asked to return for Part 2, but then she started doing Married with Children and she was just way too busy with that incredible show. Who's been playing in my fish? <laughs> so the premise in Part 2 is Regine is here to seek revenge for her brother's death. Yes, Regine Dandridge. And beautiful Julie Carmen plays her. You might remember her from In the Mouth of Madness, which is another great fucking movie. Charlie Brewster is now in college and it's been three years since the first Fright Night. He's in therapy and he's convinced himself that Jerry Dandridge was in fact just a serial murderer and that vampires aren't really real. And during this time, he has not spoken to Peter Vincent. He's been avoiding him. And in college, he's dating Alex, who is played by gorgeous Tracy Lind. I know her from a movie that I saw in theaters, My Boyfriend's Back. Fucking love that movie. Part of his therapy is to finally confront Peter Vincent. So he finally returns his call and him and Alex go to Peter's lovely apartment building like this apartment building is just gorgeous to say hello and when they leave alex needs to go to the bathroom charlie is waiting for her in the lobby and thus enters regine and her posse and they walk past charlie and charlie is just mesmerized by the beauty of this woman and she's watching him the elevator door closes and it's very intense Later that evening, a student is walking back to her dorm, but unbeknownst to her, she's being stalked by one fabulous vampire named Belle. <laughs> Belle is played by Russell Clark, and he is the most fabulous vampire on roller skates you will ever see. <laughs> Russell Clark died in 2002 and he was an award-winning choreographer. He's worked on many films like Xanadu, Earth Girls Are Easy, Vamp, and he also choreographed a shit ton of music videos. Now we're going to discuss the other members of the posse. This is very exciting for me. Okay, John Grease. Most people know him as Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. He plays a uh, like were vampire in Fright Night Part 2. Someone could be out there, you know. Now we're going to talk about Brian Thompson. I love Brian 
Thompson. I have been watching this man's face ever since I was a child. He is just a very prominent looking face. Like every single time like a movie or TV show needs to be like, we need to hire a scary fucking face. Let's get Brian Thompson. Like I just grew up watching him in like X-Files, Star Trek, and like he's in so many things like Buffy, fucking Shao Kahn. Oh fuck. Damn it. Ugh. He is like the Renfield character in Fright Night Part 2. Uh, he drives the limo and eats bugs. But he's like a suave version. Because motherfucking Brian Thompson. I just love him so much. Again, like the first Fright Night, Charlie sees Regine feeding on somebody outside of her apartment. Why are vampires always doing this at the window where they can clearly be seen and witnessed? Like close the shutters maybe? I guess they just don't give a fuck. Like they want to be caught. I don't know. And Charlie goes to ask Peter for his help like the first movie. And so they gather all their crosses and stakes and they go upstairs and Regine's apartment is like the penthouse and it's huge and beautiful and she's throwing a party. All of a sudden, Regine enters with Belle and then she starts her dance and she brings Charlie into this dance and everyone's watching. The dance is over and it's established that she's a performance artist and she takes her contacts and fangs out and Peter's like, oh, she's just a performance artist. She's not a vampire. And he's like, okay. So the next day, Peter shows up for work and he gets fired. You're fired. Fired? You can't fire me. Fright Night is my show. <laughs> well, not anymore, babe. Oh, no. And not just fired, replaced with Regine. She's the new host of Fright Night. And he's just like, fuck you guys. Then we have the bowling scene. <laughs> The bowling scene is so cute. Like, it's just the boys out on the town bowling, chopping off heads and bowling with the heads. Like, they're just all the three guys, like John Grease and Russell Clark and Brian Thompson, like, out together is just... It's adorable. I just, I, I love the cast of this movie. Like they, they did no wrong, honestly. So while everybody is watching Regine's first episode, it's very tantalizing. Peter's like, fuck this, man. I'm a fearless vampire killer. I'm gonna kill that bitch. So he goes back to the studio and attacks her during a live shoot. And so the cops get called and he's all like, she's a vampire. And they're like, oh, this guy's lost his marbles. So they put him in the insane asylum. <laughs> the fearless vampire killer. <laughs> You're a star, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> The special effects really shine in the last 15 minutes of the movie. Brian Thompson's death is fucking amazing. There's just so many like maggots and bugs like coming out of his abdomen. Russell Clark's death is very gooey. It's not as gooey as Billy's death from the first Fright Night, but it's still pretty rad. And Regine, she has this other like uh, vampire form and she's like this badass like bat creature with like a huge mouth like kind of like raw head rex and like old monster tits like it it's too bad that they didn't uh have too much uh like as much uh screen time for that mold because it just it looks fucking amazing <laughs> Thanks again for joining me on this episode of The Rewind Zone, discussing a very underrated sequel, Fright Night Part 2. Please seek it out and watch it. I know it's not as good as the first Fright Night, but it's such a good movie. Don't disregard it. You must, 
You must watch it. Even the cover of the VHS is glorious. Like, I love it. It's just very, like, white with just, like, sexy lips, fangs. Great. Good stuff. So don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, follow, all those things you kids do on the internet and keep telling me what movies you want me to cover. And don't forget, be kind, rewind, or else you might have some wet dreams that will lead to death. I was Adam West Batman for a wedding once. It was like a Halloween wedding. And I made my costume. <laughs> and then I wore it once for a show when I used to sing in a metal band. I love that. Yeah, the pictures are out there. <laughs>